Hey guys, welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a robust camera shake system, and we are going to do it using Cinemachine. This is an extremely scalable system, but it's very easy to set up, so it'll work well for big and small projects. To start off, I have a very simple scene with a player and some static enemies. You don't need assets to follow along with this tutorial. However, all of the assets you see in this video are available for you to download for free. You can use them personally or commercially, that's totally up to you. I'll leave a link down below in the description. I hope you enjoy. So the very first thing we're going to need to do is install Cinemachine. Go to Window and click on Package Manager. You can search for Cinemachine. Go ahead and install that. So the first thing we want to do is create a virtual camera. So you can right click, go down to Cinemachine, click 2D Camera. If you have a 3D project, go ahead and select a virtual camera instead. I'm going to move this up here. Let's throw the player in the follow transform slot there so that the camera actually follows the player. Now, this is super easy for us to set up. There are two things we need. We need an impulse listener and an impulse source. So let's set up the listener first. With your virtual camera selected, go down here to extensions and select Cinemachine impulse listener. The default settings are fine for now. And now for my scene here, I wanna be able to shake the camera whenever I damage an enemy. So I'm going to go to your enemy and we're gonna add Cinemachine impulse source. And I'm gonna add one to the spider as well. So we can play around with this already. If you hit play focused and you go to play, you can hit the invoke button here in order to test out your settings to see if you like them. So I'm going to leave our impulse type at uniform, but under the impulse shape here, there are a few preset shapes here that you can use. Recoil looks like this. There's a bump, an explosion, and a rumble. This is your duration over here. So if we set that to higher, you can see that it lasts longer. And we're able to easily add our own custom shape here that will generate an animation curve. We open that up. You can see that working here. And your default velocity, this is which direction the camera is actually going to shake. So it always defaults to minus one in the Y. You can see that's why it's only moving up and down in the Y axis. If we change that to the X. You can see it's only happening on the X. And actually, if I try it in the Z axis, this is not going to do anything because I have my camera set to orthographic. If I change that to perspective, you can see that working now. So let's go ahead and set up a script so that we can activate this with code. Inside my scripts folder, I'm going to create another folder called Managers. In there, I'm going to create a new C Sharp script called Camera Shake Manager. And in our scene, I'm going to create a new empty called Camera Shake Manager. I'll move that up here and add the script to that. Reset the transform and let's open up that script. We're gonna set this up so that you can call it easily from anywhere by making it a singleton. Let's get rid of all that and say public static camera shake manager instance, create an awake function. And in there we're gonna say if instance is equal to null, then instance equals this. By doing that, you won't have to get this component from anywhere. You'll just be able to reference it directly. Now let's create a new function called camera shake. And we actually generate the camera shake from the Cinemachine impulse source. So we'll need to grab a reference to that. Make sure you add the Cinemachine namespace up here. And we'll pass in Cinemachine impulse source. Call it impulse source. So in here, we'll say impulse source dot generate impulse with force. It wants a float force. So let's create that called global shake force. Let's default that to one and put that in here. So now that we have this method, we need to call it somewhere. I'm actually going to call it when I damage my enemies. So we added a Cinemachine impulse source to our enemy and to our spider. So I'll need to grab a reference to those. So we're going to say camera shake manager dot instance dot camera shake and pass in our impulse source. I'm going to do the same for my other enemy. Let's test that. All right, so already we have that set up and working, which is really awesome. And you've got a lot of options here that you can play around with to make it look good. However, there are a few things we can do to make this a lot better. So first, what I wanna show you is you've got all of these settings that you can change here, but in your virtual camera, if you open up the reaction settings down here and you choose a secondary noise, let's go with 6D shake, you can now add some amplitude gain and frequency gain as well to the camera shake. So if I set this to four and this to three, make it last for half a second, let's try that. And actually, if you want to set up your own noise profile, you can click right here. Might as well clone one of the current ones to see what we're working with. Create a new folder called Virtual Cam Data. Let's call it Test Noise. 
And if you click here and click edit, now you've got a whole bunch of other settings that you can play around with and change. I find the default ones to actually be quite nice, but if you really wanna fine tune and tweak things, then this is how you're gonna do it. Now, this is a really simple scene with only two enemies in it, but what if we wanted something a little more robust where we want a different camera shake for every single enemy type in the game? Let's go ahead and create a system that could handle that very well. Let's go into our scripts folder, create a new folder, call it SOs, go in there, let's create a new script called Screen Shake Profile. Let's open that up so we can get rid of all of this startup stuff. And this is not a mono behavior either, which means we don't need it sitting on anything in the scene. It's actually going to be a scriptable object. And a scriptable object will allow you to create your own little data files in a very easy way. So let's see how we can do that. Up here above the class, let's create a create asset menu attribute. So we'll call it screen shake. And what are we setting up? A new profile. So you'll see what that does in just a second. But first, let's set up some variables for all of the settings that we want to change. So I want to be able to change the impact time, the impact force, our default velocity vector three, as well as create custom curves. So to keep this neat, let's create a header attribute called impulse source settings. Create a public float impact time. Default that to 0.2. Public float impact force. Default that to one. Public vector three default velocity. We'll default that to zero on the X, minus one on the Y, and zero on the Z. And finally, let's create a public animation curve called impulse curve. I would also really like to be able to easily change these impulse listener reaction settings as well. So we're gonna want variables set up for amplitude, frequency, and duration as well. Let's create a new header called impulse listener settings. Create a public float called listener amplitude, a public float called listener frequency, and a public float called listener duration. And all of them are defaulted to one. Okay, so let's see what this up here did. We go back into our project, go into the assets, create a new folder called camera shake profiles. Go in there, and if you right click and go to create, you will now see this screen shake option, and let's click new profile. Let's say I want one for the spider, as well as my normal enemy. I'm just gonna throw in some random values for both. Okay, so how are we going to access this data? Let's go back to our camera shake manager script, and let's create a new method called screen shake from profile. We're gonna pass in a screen shake profile called profile, and we still need our impulse source. So Cinemachine impulse source called impulse source. So first we wanna apply all of the settings from the scriptable object that we just created. And then we wanna actually perform the screen shake. So the screen shake is easy enough. We're gonna go impulse source dot generate impulse with force, and we can pass in our profile dot impact force. As for the settings, let's create a new method called setup screen shake settings. We're gonna pass in the same variables, so let's copy and paste those. Let's actually call that here. Now, in order to access some of these so that we can change them via script, we need to grab a reference to the Cinemachine impulse definition. So let's create a private Cinemachine impulse definition called impulse definition. And our impulse definition is going to be equal to the impulse source that we are passing in dot impulse definition. I'm just gonna ignore this M underscore here. I'm not gonna say it because they all start with that. Now that we have our impulse definition, we can actually start passing in some of the values. So what did we wanna change? We wanted to change our impact time. So let's say impulse definition dot impulse duration is equal to profile dot impact time. We're already using the impulse force because we are passing that in when we call our actual screen shake. So next we want to swap out the default velocity. And for that, we actually don't need to reference our impulse definition. We can just grab the impulse source directly. Impulse source dot default velocity is equal to our profile dot default velocity. Next, we want to swap the impulse curve. For this, we need to say impulse definition dot custom impulse shape equals profile dot impulse curve. And finally, we want to pass in the listener amplitude, frequency, and duration as well. So first, we need to grab a reference to the listener. We only have one in our entire scene, and it is sitting on top of our virtual camera. So I'll just assign that up here as a serialized field so that we can drag that right into the inspector. Private Cinemachine Impulse Listener called Impulse Listener. 
Let's drag that in now before we forget. And now we can say impulse listener dot reaction settings dot amplitude gain is equal to profile dot listener amplitude. Our impulse listener dot reaction settings dot frequency gain is equal to our profile dot listener frequency. And our impulse listener dot reaction settings dot duration is equal to our profile dot listener duration. Okay, great. So we are passing in a screen shake profile and I'm calling the screen shake from my damage function for each individual enemy. So that means with this system, each individual enemy is gonna need their own screen shake profile. So let's go up here, serialize field, private, screen shake profile, call it profile. Now we'll swap out the one we were using before, but call screen shake from profile instead. And we're gonna pass in our profile and our impulse source. And I'll do the same for my spider as well. So now we'll need to drag those profiles onto our health script. And there you go. You now have a system that allows you to create customizable screen shake settings for each individual enemy or game object or whatever it is you want in your game. I hope you enjoyed guys and please let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas for future tutorials you would like to see.